Hey guys, Stephen from Davenridge European Martial Arts School. We've been doing a lot of videos on techniques for using your sword. We've done a lot of videos on structure as well as theory within the sword fight. But one of the things I'd like to cover today is one of the most basic that goes with the sword. And that's how do you wear your sword? Because if you don't wear it right, you're going to trip on it. How do you go shopping when you're wearing your sword? There's a lot that goes to this and it gets left out of so much of the study of HEMA, but it's really important because fashion is an important part of the martial art. And today we're going to go ahead and look at how we wear the sword. Now that I've got my sword on, one of the ways that people normally wear their sword is they wear it forward and very high, so it sits like this. And if you're wearing your sword so it's sitting up like this, it becomes difficult to draw your sword. Because if you need your sword, you need it now and you can't afford to put it in such a position it's very difficult to draw the weapon. If I have it up here and I try to draw it my arm's just not long enough. If I wear it down here I can draw the sword but I have to take it way out here. So where I suggest your sword is angled ever so slightly back. So it sits back this way. That way your point angles back behind your right foot if you're right handed. If you're left handed it'll angle back behind your left foot. Wearing your sword in this fashion puts the belt up high on the waist so it's right at the navel. It hangs down low enough so that when I draw it, I can pull it out and it's crossing my body the whole time. And we see this go all the way up into rapier and side sword because this first position or this high position in rapier is called prima, first. Because when you draw your weapon, that's the first place it goes to. Having it slightly behind you like this also means that when you are walking you can control where the sword is and it's almost like a rudder. As you're walking around you can move around and you can control it if you're walking in around or over things. That way you've got complete control of it. If you go to Renaissance fairs you're going to be walking around a lot of people. And if you have your sword on and you want to go shopping, you've got to be able to fit in these small tents with a lot of people in there. And unless you want to buy everything you knock off the shelves or the tables, you need to make sure you know where your sword is. You also don't want people walking into your sword and tripping over it. I've seen some people tuck the sword through their belt and that leaves it up like this and that puts the shape, the point, right at kids eye level. So it's important that you wear it correctly so that people don't run into it or trip over it. One of the ways you can control your sword if you are in a vendor's booth or walking around or stopping to look at things when people are walking around you is you take it you lift it up, move your foot around it, and then it sits right in front of your dominant leg. That keeps it up high. Your arm protects the pommel, your leg controls the point, and this way nobody can trip over your sword. The nice thing about having it this way, when you're ready to go, you just hook it and you can walk right off. So it doesn't get in the way. You can also from here, if it's very tight, just put it in front of your left thigh 
and now you have a hand rest as well. So there's a lot of different ways that you can wear it, but when you're wearing your sword, make sure that it's not a tripping hazard to others, nor will you have kids run face first onto it. You can keep it out of the way, and when you're ready to go, it's easy to just move away with it. And because you're wearing it in this fashion, and it's slightly back resting on the back of your hip, you draw it across your body, that gives you the ability to draw it one-handed, and it protects your body as you're doing it. So wear your sword correctly so that it can protect you, you can protect other people. From a historic standpoint, if I keep hitting people with my sword, I'm going to get a lot of fights. And if that's what I want, that's a different matter, but wear it so that you're not hitting other people. When you're at Renaissance fairs or other events and you have your sword on, it's important that you also know how to walk with your partner. Women, if you're wearing a sword, men, if you're wearing a sword, you need to know how to walk with the weapon on your side. And to illustrate this, I'd like to invite my lovely assistant, John. Lovely. So, why don't you move to this side, John? So, in modern, when we are walking with our partner, we'll walk like this. Unfortunately, with a sword, it's her hand that's in the inside and you're just busting on the pommel. She will not be happy with you. That will make her very displeased. So we need to protect it. When you look at illustrations or artwork, this is the way that you see them walking. What I found with this, the nice thing about this, it's like when you're dancing. If I'm going to be walking around through people, I actually point with my index finger, that controls my elbow. So if I want to go this way, I just point this way and that moves us. If I want to go this way, it affects the elbow and the connection between the two of us. So when we're walking, I just kind of point where we want to go and you can feel it, can't you? Mm -hmm. But this is also important if you get jumped. So go ahead and relax for a second. I had a lot of fun when I was younger with my wife. We were relatively newly married, only about six years or so. And I taught my wife how to be my offhand weapon, which she's great. She went right along with. However, everybody else is very surprised when you throw your wife at them. So what I did is we'd be walking along like this, and then I'd have Joe Thug come up, and he'd be facing me. So again, using the same idea of pointing, I would step forward with my right foot just a little bit. That puts my left hip back, making it easier to draw my sword. Then I bring my pinky or my index finger that my lady wife is holding on to towards my right side. She just holds her fist out like this. And then as I do this, cold cocks and my sword comes right out. So they get hit and then I draw my sword on them. Can we do that one more time? So from here, I see them walking up. They start to give me a guff or we're putting on a, a, you know, a little skit in the street. I'll walk forward, hit. She's behind me and I've got my weapon in front of us. So this is a way that I played around with so that I could use my wife as an offhand weapon. Because, like the Spanish Inquisition, 
Nobody expects that. With that, we're going to close up. I'd like to thank my lovely assistant, John. We are closing down for the winter break. I hope you all have happy holidays. But while we are down, there will be other videos coming out that we have recorded. Thanks for joining us today. If you liked what you saw, please hit the subscribe button. It's somewhere right down here, as well as the notification button. We have videos coming out every week.